everyone, thank you for joining me today and in today's video we're going to be looking at the high yield genetic conditions for fine lords. Okay, so a little bit about the medicine guide. So the medicine guide is a YouTube channel with various videos from how to get into medical school, how to be successful in medical school, so the series involves how to be successful during the preclinical years, how to be successful during the clinical years, how to get the most out of your GP placements, how to get the most out of hospital placements, and how to succeed in clinical finals. Also, there's another series of videos involving high yield paediatric conditions for finals, including high yield child with a mask for finals, high yield rashes for finals, high yield limping child for finals, high yield congenital heart disease for finals, and high yield vomiting child for finals. So if you enjoy my video today, please support me by hitting the like button, subscribing to my YouTube channel, sharing my video with your friends, and also please post in the comment section below. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So the outline of today's video is that I'm going to be covering these 12 high yield genetic conditions, which typically and classically crop up in final year exams. So we're going to discuss Kreidyshat syndrome, Patel syndrome, Edwards syndrome, Pierre Robin syndrome, prader willi syndrome, Williams syndrome, Fragile X syndrome, Noonan syndrome, Turner syndrome, Down syndrome, Kleinfelter and DiGeorge syndrome. So for, we, for each of these syndromes I will have a picture of a patient presenting with these symptoms and also I'll be summarising the key points that you need to remember for each of these conditions in order to get the top marks for your exams. So let's get started. So this is an example of Kreidyshat syndrome. So Kreidyshat syndrome is caused by a chromosome 5p deletion. So the mother, will, mother or father will present with a child and they will be complaining that the child has this cat-like cry and that's very characteristic for Kreidyshat syndrome. The child will experience feeding difficulties and therefore they'll have very poor weight gain. Unfortunately, the child will suffer from learning difficulties. They will suffer from microcephaly, micronathism and hypertelorism. So that's when the eyes are spaced quite far apart. Okay. So this is an example of Patel syndrome. So Patel syndrome is caused by trisomy 13 and it's really, really important that you remember the name of the genetic condition and also the underlying pathology. So the underlying pathology for Patel syndrome is trisomy 13 and that comes up again quite classically in exams. So that's why I've highlighted in red and that's something you really do need to remember. So the child will present with microcephaly, a cleft lip or cleft palate. So cleft lip is just where it involves the upper lip whereas cleft palate involves the inner mouth and when you peer when you look into the child's mouth you'll see that slit like structure okay polydactyl so extra fingers of the hand scalp lesions and cyclopia okay next we've got edwards syndrome so edwards syndrome is caused by trisomy 18 now it, for, for some people including myself i found it quite challenging remembering which trisomies led to what certain pathologies. So when I was revising Edwards syndrome, instead of writing Edwards syndrome with the letter E, I would always replace the letter E with the number 8 to help me remember that Edwards syndrome is due to trisomy 18 because I always used to get confused about whether it was due to trisomy 21, which is Downs, trisomy 13, which is Patau's, or if it was actually trisomy 18. So I found it quite useful that when I was writing my notes to replace the first E with the number eight to help me remember that Edwards syndrome is due to trisomy 18. Okay, so children will present with micronathia, low set ears, rocker bottom feet, overlapping fingers, neural tube defects, and also choroid plexus cysts. Okay. So this is an example of Pierre Robin syndrome. So this is due to a mutation in SOX9. So children will have micronathia, 
they will have posterior displacement of the tongue and a cleft palate. So this is quite similar to the syndrome that we saw previously. But the key aspect to help differentiate Pierre Robin syndrome from Patel syndrome is that whilst Patel syndrome does present with a cleft lip or cleft palate, the symptoms that are pointing more towards Pierre Robin syndrome in your SBA are things such as the posterior tongue displacement and micronathia. And also, if you're given information pertaining that there's a mutation in SOX9, that should switch off the, that should switch on the light bulb immediately in your brain and make you think, oh, this is Pierre Robin syndrome, and you should be able to tick that answer quite easily and quite quickly. Okay. So prader willi syndrome is caused by a deletion in the paternal copy. So that's really important that you remember it's on the father side. The paternal copy of 15Q1113. So this type of pathology is described as a genetic imprinting. So in your SBA, it might give uh, a question which states what's the underlying cause or pathology of prader willi syndrome? Sometimes, if the examiners are feeling quite kind to you, one of the answers might be deletion in paternal copy 15Q1113. However, if the examiners are feeling particularly mean, like they usually are, rather than giving a, a good description like that, they might just describe it as genetic imprinting. And unless you recognise what that is, and unless you're familiar with that term, then it'll be quite difficult for you to pick the correct answer. So for prader willi syndrome, remember two things, deletion and paternal copy, 15Q1113, or it can also be described as genetic imprinting. Okay, so these patients will present with hypotonia, hypogonadism, and obesity. So this is an example of Williams syndrome. Um, I do apologise for the picture. This is the best picture that I could find to help describe Williams syndrome. So Williams syndrome is due to a chromosome 7 deletion. So these patients often present with a short stature, learning difficulties. So these patients, despite, have, despite suffering from learning difficulties, they still are quite friendly. They're quite extroverted. They have elfin-like faces. So that means their appearance tends to be quite pleasing to the eye. And unfortunately, a complication that they may suffer from is a supravalvular aortic stenosis. And again, that's quite high yield to remember for your final exams. And again, if you struggle to remember the pathology that leads to particular syndromes, when I was revising for my exams, to help remember that Williams syndrome is due to a chromosome 7 deletion, when I would write out Williams syndrome in my notes, I would replace the double L in William with a number seven, just to help me remember that William syndrome is due to a chromosome seven deletion. So it's these little tips and hints that really help to improve your revision and help you to maximize your marks in exams, okay? So the next one is Fragile X syndrome. So Fragile X syndrome is due to a trinucleotide repeat disorder of X chromosome. Again, I do apologise for sounding patronising, but that's really important to remember for your exam, and that's why I've underlined it in bright red. So patients tend to present with macrocephaly, a long, thin face, large ears, macroautism, so that's describing the male genitalia being quite large in size. Um, they also suffer from a mitral valve prolapse, and they might present with high arched palate. Okay. So next we've got Noonan syndrome. So Noonan syndrome is an autosomal dominant condition. Patients will have a webbed neck, so that means um, that there's quite a coarse angle between the neck and the shoulders, as seen in the diagram. They have a short stature. They suffer from pulmonary stenosis, that's the type of murmur that they present with and they have pectus excavatum present on their chest okay and that's something that's really important to help you remember and pick the correct answer in your sba 
So this is an example of Turner syndrome. Now, Turner syndrome is very high yield for both uh, paediatrics and also in women's health, the knobs and gynae, and I'll explain why. So Turner syndrome is due to 45XO or 45X chromosome. So because these patients are only presenting with one X chromosome, that means this condition only affects girls. And also because they only present with one X chromosome, that means that any X linked recessive conditions that are present in their family, women with Turner syndrome are more likely to suffer from those X linked recessive conditions because they only have one X chromosome to present. So if they inherit one copy, then that's sufficient for them to express the phenotype and therefore suffer from those symptoms. Okay, so women who suffer from Turner syndrome will present with a short stature, a shield chest, widely spaced nipples, primary amenorrhea, and complications involves aortic lactation and a bicuspid aortic valve. Now, previously I described that Turner syndrome is quite common and high yield for paediatric questions and obs and gynae questions. Now, the reason why it's quite high yield for obs and gynae questions is that these women suffer from primary amenorrhea. So that means these women will never, will reach the age of 15, 16, um, or perhaps even older, and these girls will not have started their periods. They will not have experienced one menstrual cycle. So that's primary amenorrhea. So primary amenorrhea is when women have never suffered, have never experienced a menstrual cycle. They've never experienced that um, cyclical period bleed that women have. So these women will never suffer from it. Now there's also something called secondary amenorrhea, and this is where women have experienced a period in the past, but for whatever reason they haven't had their periods for quite a while now. So that's found in secondary amenorrhea and there's a long list of all the different pathologies which are attributed to secondary amenorrhea, but focusing on Turner syndrome, the key point that you need to remember for Turner syndrome is that these are women will suffer from primary amenorrhea. So they'll reach the age of 15, 16, perhaps even older, and they will never have suffered or experienced a period. And they'll present GP and they'll be complaining that they've never had any periods, okay? And that's why Turner syndrome is high yield for obs and gynae, okay? So let's move on to the next condition. So this is an example of Down syndrome. So Down syndrome is so, so high yield for final exams, I can't stress how high yield it is. So Down syndrome is caused by trisomy 21. Unfortunately, I don't have any hints or tips to help remember that Down syndrome is due to trisomy 21. It's something that I'm afraid you'll just have to learn. So these children will present with the symptoms found on the left hand side. They'll also present with a center toe gap. So that means that there's quite a large gap between the big toe and the first digit of their toe, sorry, the first digit on their foot. They'll have a single palm crease. So if you look at your hands right now, um, most of us will have quite a few different creases running along the palms. These children with Down syndrome will only have one single palm and I believe that's called the simian crease. Sorry, they'll have a single palm crease and that's known I believe as the simian palm crease. They'll have a short neck, a flat occiput, so the back of the head will be quite flat. They'll have a protruding tongue and a small mouth. They'll also have a round face and a flat nasal bridge. Also, one more thing that I want to emphasize is that mothers will look into their child's eyes and they'll uh, describe that the child has got um, stars in their eyes. So this is a description of Brushfield spots. So Brushfield spots, if you have a look at the diagram, are white spots arranged in a ring. So in the SBA, if there's any description of a mum um, or care or anyone else looking into the baby's eyes and they think that the baby has got stars in their eyes, that's a very classic description of brushfield spots and that should immediately make you consider Down syndrome and therefore trisomy 21, okay? So now we've got Kleinfelter syndrome. So Kleinfelter syndrome is caused by 47XXY. 
Again, that's a really, really important genotype that you need to remember. It's very high yield for finals. So these men have got an extra X chromosome. So that's why it's 47 XXY. So that means they have more estrogen in their body relative to the other boys and to the, to the other boys in their class. OK, so they've got a higher estrogen to uh, testosterone ratio than would be normal. So they tend to be quite slim and tall. They present with hypogonadism, gynecomastia, so that's feminization of the breasts. Reduced muscle bulk and facial hair compared to other boys because they've got more estrogen because of the extra X chromosome and therefore in proportion they've got slightly less testosterone. So that's why they've got the reduced muscle bulk and uh, reduced facial hair. Unfortunately, these men are at greater risk of developing osteoporosis and they're also at greater risk of developing breast cancer as well. So finally, we've got DiGeorge syndrome. So DiGeorge syndrome is due to a chromosome 22 deletion, so 22Q11.2. So I've put that in brackets because in the exam, they might ask you to describe the pathology of DiGeorge syndrome. They might give you an option of chromosome 22 deletion if they want to be nice. However, if they want to be mean, like examiners typically are, then they will have an answer option of 22Q11.2. So I've put that in brackets so you're aware of it, so you can get those high yield marks. So these children are at risk of developing uh, tetralogy of phallus. So tetralogy of phallus is something that I will cover in my high yield congenital heart disease for finals video. And essentially it is one of the presentations of congenital heart disease that can cause a child to appear cyanosed, usually after the first week of life, typically within the first month of life. And if you want more detail on that, then please do look at my high yield congenital heart disease video, which is available on the paediatric playlist on my YouTube channel. OK, so other symptoms that children with DiGeorge syndrome will show is that they will have a long face with small teeth, broad nose, cleft palate, and these children will have higher rates of will have higher rates of schizophrenia compared to other individuals. Okay? So that's the end of the high yield pediatrics genetic conditions. I just wanted to say thank you for watching my video. I appreciate it's been quite a long video. If I could kindly ask you to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share my video with friends, and also please post in the comment section below what you think of the video. And I wish you all the best for your final exams, and thank you for watching.